I came across this project which you are seeing right now the first time a few months back on Twitter itself when I came across this one guy called Shivansh. It's his handle is Confused Qubit. And I came across this interesting tweet in April, right? Where he said that just got nested virtualization to work on non-metal EC2 instances. So what is this exactly? How does this save a lot of money for people like us, for example, and people like you, for example, if you're a developer? And what does this mean? Like why this is a big thing? I want to talk about this that in this specific video, starting with a few very, very interesting concepts which you might not know. So while this specific tweet is not exactly related to what I want to discuss in this video, but this was the tweet which gathered my attention because around the same time we were trying to figure out the same thing, like if it is even possible with AWS. So I would not dive deep into nested virtualization and what this means. You can also Google this if you are more interested, but what it means basically just as an overview is that in AWS, architecture, how AWS builds EC2s, you cannot have multiple layer of virtualization. A virtualization layer is basically, let's say if AWS has a real raw computer of 128 cores and like, you know, 64 GB RAM, it would not give you that. Of course, it can give you that, but it also gives you the ability to create just one CPU, right? One core, half GB RAM, T2 micro, something like that. So for that, it needs a virtualization layer in order to abstract away the hardware, in order to make sure like, you know, there is a hypervisor which can allocate how many cores or resources it wants on a specific machine. Nested virtualization is possible, but on metal EC2 instances and metal EC2 instances are complete instances. Like I mentioned that, you know, they are full instances. If you are able to get nested virtualization to work on a non-metal EC2 instance, what you can achieve, the reason I was interested in this tweet was that you would be able to run Docker or Kubernetes or these sort of workloads within a container, right? So what that means is that if you go on code dam right now, or even on firm on, for example. On CodeDAM, if you go ahead and open this playground, for example, right now, what you can do is that you can run Node.js, you can run Java, you can run all of these softwares, right? So if I go ahead and if I try to look at Java, for example, over here, Java version, I'm able to run that, I'm able to run Node, I'm able to run Python, all of that, but I cannot run Docker. Now, one of the reasons for this is, of course, like, because this is a containerized environment, itself is running inside Docker, but if we remove that limitation by any way, this still would not be possible to run on an EC2 because EC2 doesn't support nested virtualization on non-metal machines, right? And we are running on a non-metal machine right now. So anyway, once I got to know about this tweet, like I checked out his work and I checked out what the company he's working with does and Loophole Labs, what they do is they create, their goal is to allow running all of the workloads on cloud spot instances, which is another, you know, brain exploding moment because spot instances, I'll tell you what spot instances basically are. So let's see if we create a new page. So let's say you have a data center right over here. If you have a data center like AWS, what can happen is that you as a data center, there is nothing such as serverless for you, right? You always have to buy servers. AWS Lambda is also working on many, many servers, right? So as a data center, you buy a lot of compute, right? You buy a lot of these computers over and over again, and you have like a lot of compute power available to you almost all the time. Now what happens over here is that that all of these CPUs will never be running at 100%. See, because your ideal use case, your ideal workflow would be like everything as 100%. But you don't really want that because you don't know. AWS doesn't know what sort of predictable, what sort of load would come in the next second, right? So anyone else can also request for a, I need, I need a new EC2 instance, right? So what they would do is almost always over provision their data center, right? By a lot of capacity. So even if they just need this much CPU, for example, or you know, whatever, this they would just need this much CPU instances, they'll still keep these many CPU instances around, right? Now, the reason for that is because they want to handle new customers, they want to handle new use cases and so on. But more often than not, what happens is that this CPU is going to waste, right? So if let's say if AWS is charging, let's say it's charging $1 per machine, just as a random thing, right? So it's getting one, two, three, four, five, six dollars right now, right? Effectively, it can get like in the best case, it can get $12. So what these machine providers do, what they try to do is that if they have like a lot of free capacity available, which nobody's using, they would say that, okay, we will rent it out to you, but for 0.5, right? Or 0.3 per machine, whatever, per machine per minute. I mean, just simplifying this a little bit. So what this would mean is that this cost is ridiculously low compared to this one, right? And it becomes obvious when you look at huge numbers, right? So if you're saving 70% over here, what that means is that instead of spending, let's say $100,000 a month, you are only spending 
saving $30,000, right? That's $70,000 in savings. So you can achieve that. But the only catch over here is that because this is come in any time. So a new customer says, a new customer comes in and says, Ki, I need a new instance, right? And let's say if this whole block of instance is full and you are using it for lesser price, what AWS would say that, hey, so sorry, but we need this instance back, right? AWS will say that we need, so AWS sees that you are using a spot instance, you as in like some other developer, and they will take it away from you, right? So you'll say that it, this is pretty useless, right? Then why would you even use this? Because AWS can just come in and take this away anytime, right? So the real use case of spot instances so far has been restricted to the cases where you can afford to lose a machine, right? Where your task is very small, very ephemeral. For example, let's say if you're doing some sort of video processing or image processing, which you can retry over and over again without any like loss of information or something like that. So you would do all of that processing over here, over on these spot instances, because not only are they cheap, but it doesn't matter if your instance is taken away by AWS at any time. What these guys are saying is that they want you to run all of your workloads on cloud spot instances, which by the way, like sort of defeats the point of cloud spot instances in a way, because the real difference has been so far is that these instances are meant for work, which can be terminated at any time. And these instances, when you buy like a green instance, for example, because AWS never terminates this instance, when you are buying it as a customer, as a, like a non spot instance, you will retain this instance, right? At all times. So you would probably use it for running an HTTP server. For example, if you're doing a CI CD job, you will probably use that because you don't want it to terminate in between. If you're using it for a WebSocket server, you will use that as a game thing, right? You know, people are connected to WebSocket, so you can't just kill the server. But these guys are changing the game. What they are saying is that when the spot instance is about to be deleted, we live migrate you to another host without any downtime. This is like the most crazy thing about this whole project, which I still, which I'm still yet to understand on a technical level, how they even do that. I have watched this video also, I think a few months back only, but I have no idea like how they do that. They don't even go into technicalities a bit. So yeah, this, this is the comment I remember. Yeah. So the, the main thing is that even if you are able to do everything, how do you copy the whole net, network stack, right? The IP address, how the machine is communicating over the network, what packets, which are, you know, like in the process of getting sent and so on. So they do perform a live migration of a Minecraft server in this video, but I still don't understand like fully how this works on a technical level. But what these guys say is, is that meaning you can run stateful workloads like Redis or Postgres or game servers like Minecraft without any issues. Unfortunately, bare metal spot instances are hard to come by. So we had to make our software to work on normal off the shelf EC2. So yeah, so, so this tweet, what he tweeted about was that they are now able to do the same thing with spot instances are generally like, you know, like I mentioned, they are free compute and most of the time AWS doesn't give you like a hundred core CPU as a spot instance because they almost always have like virtualization or somebody is using that or something like that is there right so they just created that the initial tweet about what it was and uh, yeah so as for what, what the biggest challenge was is was updating the actual hypervisor which is firecracker to work with experimental kernel patch and then to stabilize the set patch so at this point I did ask him I remember I asked him this question this is from April 18th so we did research searched this path almost a year back for our own code damn playgrounds, but gave up midway because of a few reasons. One of them was that AWS two minute spot termination notification is best effort as far as I remember. So this is also something which I had a question. So what, what happens is that when this new customer comes in, AWS says that, Hey, if you have a spot instance, which you are using and we need it back, we will give you a two minute termination warning. After that, we'll just terminate your instance. So AWS is not as cruel as they, you know, they might look by with the spot instance thing that they'll just directly terminate your workload. That's not what happens. They take it slow. They give you a two minute warning, but this two minute warning is a best effort, right? So it's not like they will always give you this warning. This is a best effort. So how do you account for that? AWS just nuking your critical instance without a warning because that's possible, right? So again, like he did reply, but I, I won't say like I fully understood what was the conversation going on at that point, because again, like I mentioned, this was my question from last time also. And he does say like, we might get the whole virtual machine. We just move the entire machine kernel and everything. The hard part is making sure, making it so that you can move the VM from Frankfurt to New York while rerouting the network connections in real time. I have no idea how this works. This talk is again, I think this is the same link, zero downtime. I have seen this video, but it doesn't answer those specific questions exactly. Like how does the routing work? How does on the network level it looks like? So I'm interested to see and, you know, learn more about their product. At that point, back in April, I don't think they had this domain. I'm not sure, but I don't think I have not seen that at that point, but I came across this this tweet again like one of the tweets which he made which was this tweet right
right? So somebody posted, I need a VPS lower cost than Hertzner. Any suggestions? And then he mentioned architect.run, which again got me curious because I knew the guy. I knew the discussion we had like a few months back. And this is the website which they say, I use spot instances for any workload. So architect lets you take advantage of spot instances for any workload on any cloud, saving you 90% of the compute cost for even the most demanding tasks like data pipelines, machine learning, and CI CD, right? So if you look at spot instances, if I show you like EC2 pricing advantage, right? So if I show you something like this, let's take a look at something like M6A large, right? So this is one of the instances we use for code damn playgrounds, right? So this, this whole thing is running on M6A large. So if you look at this, you will see that it's on demand cost is 0.0864 hourly and the spot instance minimum cost is 0.0275, right? So when you're using something like this, you are paying 24 and 30, you're paying $60 dollars a month versus if you're using something like this you are paying 24 and 30 which is 20 dollars a month right and this makes even big difference if you are going for you know bigger and bigger instances depending on like you have to find your sweet spot at some point but if i let's say if i remove this filter and if i go for a spot cost filter so for this specific instance for example just giving you another example of c7g and medium right 2 gb ram one vcpu the hourly cost for this on demand like if you buy it as a customer at 0.0624 and a spot instance cost is 0.0062 so it's 10 times lower which it also claims like 90% cheaper than on demand instances so why would you not use something like this right it makes no sense because with AWS and providers like this you have those flexibility of running workloads on demand so with Hertzner sure you can run it maybe like on a similar price or slightly higher or slightly lower but the thing is that you have to buy this in as a whole and you have to make the setup fee cost then you can not scale it up or down based on your requirements and it's much less flexible compared to a cloud provider it might be cost saving but it's less flexible right so what if i say you like you can save your 90 percent of your bill that makes like that's absolutely crazy to imagine at like a scale where you're spending like fifty thousand hundred thousand dollars a month in cost it says like the challenge with support instances that spot instances can be reclaimed at any time Spot instances can be terminated with only seconds of notice before architect this meant application downtime and potentially even data loss making spot unsuitable for use with any type of stateful workload. Obviously true, like I mentioned, architect makes spot uninterruptible. Seamless migrations with zero downtime. Architect detects spot instance terminations and automatically migrates your workloads to new nodes well before the deadline. This process is completely transparent to your applications, preserving the state and even maintaining the network connectivity. You get all the cost savings of spot instances without the risk of interruption or data loss. For once, I don't know how this works. I, I need to look deeper into their, like whenever they make the next talk, whenever, whenever they explain more about this we would need to look deeper into how this network thing is preserved so they are not open right now they are still in you know beta but the use case is one of the biggest use case of course is github actions for example if you are using it for ci cd and you need very powerful machines let's look at github actions pricing right so github actions pricing is ridiculous you will see that if you want 16 core machine per minute rate for github actions in usd 0.064 right similarly if i go ahead and try to look for a 16 core machine over here and sort it by rate you can see this is 0.063 but that's per hour right this is 0.064 per minute this is 0.0638 per hour so this is 60 times cheaper than github actions right if you're running your work load on spot you are saving 60 times more money compared to uh, you know running it on github actions and this corresponds to a lot of savings imagine like you are getting a bill of one thousand dollars and now you're suddenly getting a bill of sixteen dollars right it's a huge difference when you are looking at things like this yeah i think nothing else can be done except for going through their wait list and going through their a few blogs if they have i'm not sure like if they have more resources so yeah i mean they don't have a lot of content right now their docs are also so 404 so maybe they can fix that but this is this is very interesting project as a idea as a concept and i'm looking forward to like how this works you can follow the people on twitter who are like the people behind this company to stay updated you can also go through this video which i highly recommend because you anyway would learn a lot of new things i did go through this video a few months back so i'll leave all of these links below in the description that's all for this specific one i would see you in the next video really soon make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this.